Hey everyone, welcome to Shane Rush, where I talk about movies, TV shows, and mostly just things that annoy me. Today I'm talking about um, a new Halloween TV show, or movie, or both, um, with fellow YouTuber Tag Mac. Hey Sky guys, I'm uh, doing good man, thank you for having me. Yeah, of course. Um, I think that like um, any new Halloween like project, um, one thing that they should probably just do is maybe like reboot or just not bring back Jamie Lee Curtis because oh yeah to T totally agree yeah she's uh, had her run move on definitely yeah I mean didn't it like come out that she signed something saying she wouldn't do any more movies like a year ago or something uh I don't know if she would have signed anything because I don't know whether you actually need to she can literally just like come out and say oh, I've had enough I'm done and I believe that's what she did so um yeah, but if anything, it's a good thing, in my opinion, because we've had her multiple times now already. Yeah, so. I mean, the the other girl who played Laurie in um, Rob Zombie's Halloween films, as like, weird as those films are, I mean, she did a pretty good job. Her version of Laurie was okay, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, well, she, she definitely was. She wasn't the worst, anyway, so... Yeah, I don't, I don't think we've really had just, like, a bad iteration of Laurie Strode. I'd say the only weirdish one was um, in Ends, where she sort of just went from like paranoid crazy lady to just like regular old grandmother. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I I see exactly what you're saying there. It, I I found her uh, d definitely a bit different from how she was acting in the first two movies uh, in that one. So yeah, I mean, I guess they kind of did it though because she kind of had to take the mother step to take care of Alison at the time since her parents were both dead. Uh, but, uh, yeah, she definitely did feel like she was a bit out of place in that movie, but a lot of things felt wrong in that movie, so, yeah. yeah. I mean, I say that as, like, a enjoyer, I'll say, of Halloween Ends, but I liked a lot that was in the movie, but then there was just also the fact that a, what, 21-year-old kid took down Michael Myers after what, a year after he'd gone on a horrible rampage. Um, I'm... I'm probably not going to say the actual word, but maybe Michael got, um, what was it, C-19, and then just, like, he was yeah. dying. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's uh, there's tons of theories about why Michael was as weak as he was in that movie, and I've made multiple theory videos myself, but honestly, it's anyone's guess right now. I mean, it, it, in my opinion, it was just a stupid decision made by specifically David Gordon Green. Um so yeah, and I guess they paid the price for it, didn't they? So because the movie was bad. So yeah, I mean, along with that, the new Exorcist film wasn't really that good, and it seems like he's not even going to direct the next one of those now. Yeah, yeah. Well, I haven't actually seen the movie myself just yet, which is uh, why I haven't like made any content surrounding it. Uh, but from what I've heard about the movie, it's not looking or sounding good. So uh, I think the chances of there being a sequel with him involved are very slim. But yeah. yeah well, they did announce the sequel. I think it's called like The Exorcist Deceiver or something, but he's not attached to it. And the first one was mainly just like cop subplot in the first half, and then like boring in the second half. Yeah, I could imagine. It sounds like David Gordon Green to me. So, <laughs> yeah. But I mean, one thing which they probably could do, but um, maybe won't do, is just. Forget about Halloween 6 and continue from Halloween 5, but still bring Paul Rudd in because he's a good actor at least. Yeah, I mean, the the, the chances of them getting him back down now, uh, I think, are pretty slim, only because he's obviously involved with uh, big IPs such as Marvel and stuff like that, and he's going to be worth a lot of money if they want to get him back. So... I'd say that's unlikely for them to get him back specifically, but as a continuation of that movie where it left off, I, I wouldn't mind that at all. I think that would be pretty interesting. So, Yeah, the, the only thing I'd say, if they were to actually just continue it from Halloween 6, don't bring Loomis back with AI if they're even thinking about doing that. Like, they should just cancel it all together if they're even going to think about doing that. They yeah. should do what they did in, like, the David Gordon Green trilogy where they had a new actor, they used makeup, and then they had someone else voicing him. Because he looked a yeah. lot like 
You sound like him. Yeah, he did look a lot like him, that guy. I, I, I'm afraid I don't know the, the name of the actor who was portraying him in that uh, uh, flashback sequence. But um, yeah. uh, f for the short work that he did as the character, I think he was very uh, reminiscent to the actor who originally played him. And uh, yeah, I, I didn't really see a difference. So hmm. yeah, definitely. For some reason, I remember seeing that it was like the, I think it was like a coordinator of the film that played him. And then some comedian, like, did the voice? Uh, possibly could have been. I don't know too much about it myself, I'm going to be honest. But uh, once again, from what I saw of the from the character portrayed, I think they did a great job. And I totally agree with you from what you said a couple of seconds ago about them doing an AI Loomis would just be a terrible idea. Uh, so, yeah, don't do that. But please, let's not do CG stuff. That, that just looks horrible. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's that's one of the reasons I actually enjoy um, kills and ends because they didn't use like CG blood; they just used like practical effects, makeup, yeah. stunts, and all of that. But yeah, I, I think one of the other ideas which I've been having for a while, which um, maybe do like a show, but it's in Smith Grove, and it's about Loomis first meeting Michael, leading up to Michael escaping. Yeah, I mean, that would definitely be interesting to see as maybe like a, a spin-off series or something. But could, could they really do a lot? Like, because the whole sit show were, or movie would take place in uh, Smith's Grove. That's the name of the place, right? I believe it is. Yeah. Um, so... I mean, in terms of kills and stuff, what exactly could they really do in that time? Because it would obviously be a prequel to that first movie, or it could be a reboot, but most likely I'm just going to say it's a prequel. Um, and they've got to be careful on what they have Michael do, because it could affect the events that took place in the first movie. So, yeah, maybe it would be better as a reboot, but I'm not so sure. Yeah, well, um, I'm pretty sure that there are these sort of, like, non-canon but like half canon comics yeah which i know what you're talking about like, which will show his time in smith grove and he like drowned kids he burned kids he killed a few of them and i don't know they could probably adapt that but then maybe not yeah well, not well, nice, uh, yeah well once again it, it comes back to the argument of well if he did all that stuff which would be cool um how come it never got mentioned in that first movie and we only got told that the one person he killed was his sister when he was six? So that would be the only thing I think that they might have a bit of trouble with. But then again, as I said, if it ends up being a reboot, then theoretically they could do whatever they want. So Yeah. But then talking about reboots, they could at some point just... If Rob Zombie ever directs another movie, personally I'd prefer to see another movie in the Hellbilly universe because free from hell saw just like ends randomly <laughs> um yeah but i kind of for some reason i just really want to see halloween 3d is not what they were going to call it uh which halloween movie was that sorry Whoa. um the third one of rob zombies if he was ever going to make it Ah, that, uh, I don't know too much about that movie. I mean, I knew there were plans to make a third one before, of course, the second one flopped. But um, I, I never really read much into it or did much research surrounding the third movie in his franchise. But from how from how the second one was, I, c I couldn't imagine the third one would have been any better. So uh, if anything, I'm kind of happy that it never ended up happening. So Yeah, um, I'm pretty sure that they sort of just said that it would have been like... Laurie gets broken out of the asylum by Michael, and then she kills Dr. Loomis thinking that it is Michael, because she's hallucinating. And then she walks away with the, like, well, Rob Zombie's wife. Well, uh, that that already has me very confused. So once again, I'm, I'm happy that that never happened. <laughs> yeah. You know, people, people hate on ends all the time, but... It's it's about a thousand percent better than weird um, ghost ponies and Rob Zombie's wife getting an extra paycheck. Yeah, uh, I, I guess I I can't really disagree. It's it's a bit of a mess, really, isn't it? So, 
Yeah, um, what's one of your ideas though? Because I've said a few now. Um, what regarding Halloween? Yeah. Um, well, I, I, I think uh, if there's something I really want other than any, anything else, it would probably be a, a reboot because I feel like they, they keep on trying to give us the same thing over and over and it's kind of getting a bit repetitive now. We need something new. We need something fresh. So I don't know how you feel about that, but me personally, I think a reboot is probably the best option to go with next for the franchise. Uh, but as far as I know, there's something currently in development, so I guess it's not too long until we find out. But what what, what do you think about uh, the possibility of a reboot over anything else? Yeah, um, well, reboot, of course, it could be really good. Um, you, you could have new Laurie, new Michael, you could have an entire new storyline. They don't have to just remake the um, original, they can do something yeah. new. Um, but the one thing that they really shouldn't do in a reboot is try to explain why Michael killed any time oh yeah i totally agree explanation to his killings that's where a timeline just suddenly ends and we get a new reboot yeah yeah i agree it, it's better with michael because i think that's what they, they they did really well with those uh first two movies in the the newest trilogy that we've just had uh the, the, they, they gave us next to nothing in regards to why michael is killing people i mean they said something about he kills people then he goes home that's pretty much it so yeah. it's his, it's his version of trick or treating, literally. So yeah, they didn't really say much. I think like at the end of Kills, Laurie says when he kills, he transcends into something else. But that just made me think of um, I can't remember what it is, but um, in some like I think it was like a superhero movie. Someone says, "I become something else. I become someone else." I can't remember what that's from, but it just made me think of that in the time. Yeah, well, it, it's funny you mentioned the uh, the line from Laurie from uh, what was it? Kills? She said yeah. that, or it's like, yeah, it's kills. Right at the end of Kills, the scene that they were hyping up in the trailer with her leaving the hospital holding a knife, yeah. and then just ends. the ending of the movie. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, she obviously, I I believe that that's what a lot of people were arguing with uh, as to why he was so weak in Halloween Ends because uh, I I could be wrong on this, but I think Halloween Ends takes place four or five years after um halloween kills so yeah. that people are saying he hasn't killed anyone in that time and that's why he's so weak because he's he, his power has just run out because he hasn't killed anybody uh now whilst that's a good theory david gordon green and everyone else behind these movies has been saying from the very beginning that he's not supernatural i don't know how he survived everything he has if he's not supernatural but apparently he's not so we've got to take that into consideration as well i guess well, then, apparently he's just Leatherface from the new Texas Chainsaw movie that we got then. Because he wasn't supernatural, but he was basically just Jason Voorhees. He, like, got... I think he got stabbed, like, with a chainsaw. Then he was thrown into, like, a thing, and he fell really deep into it and probably drowned. But then yeah, he I watched the movie. Back, pulled the girl out of a Tesla and just cut her head off. Yeah, I mean, uh... I I do believe there was a um, explanation with the uh, Leatherface in that movie, which was different to obviously the whole Michael situation. Uh, Michael, they say he's not supernatural, but it's pretty obvious he is. Uh, whereas Leatherface in that movie, I, I can't remember who said it, but I believe someone behind the movie said that um, there were originally plans to reveal that he had some disease that prevented him from feeling pain. And that's why he wasn't able to like be slowed down when like they'd stab him or something because he didn't feel it but i think that would have been better than them just saying oh he's not supernatural but they're not explaining as to how he's surviving all this stuff but yeah yeah well i don't think that's really the best explanation either because like escape room 2 tournament of champions you had the character who couldn't feel pain like her hands landed on like i think it was a an oven like a grill on top of an oven mm. and she was fine but then just the moment afterwards she dies from acid. But I don't think that's really a good reason for Leatherface. I know, yeah. Them. Yeah, they can still die. They just obviously can't feel pain and stuff. But yeah, well, once again, you come to a, a, a an error in what they're saying because it, it just doesn't make sense. So uh, I think they should just stop lying to themselves and admit that they're all supernatural. But of course, for some reason, they're not doing that. So Yeah, 
at least, you know, Don Manasini, he doesn't like all the voodoo stuff, but at least he still goes with it with Chucky. Yeah, I mean, with the with the Chucky series, which I don't know whether you're watching, but I'm kind of fully caught up with it. Um, they're yeah, finally start. I, I they're they're finally starting. Time. Yeah, okay. Uh, they're finally starting to go into the voodoo stuff, which we haven't really seen much of apart from oh, we can do this and that. Um, so I'm definitely happy that we're finally diving into that a little bit with Chucky specifically. But um, yeah, the, 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 I guess that's the difference between Chucky, Leatherface, Michael, all these characters. At least Chucky is actually willing to uh, confess that he's supernatural and these other characters lie, uh, their creators lying to themselves saying that, oh, he's not supernatural, he's not. But we're not going to tell you how they're surviving all these things either. So, it, yeah, it's just a bit confusing, really. But they should stop lying to themselves because it's obvious. But, yeah. So. Yeah, I mean... With Michael, there's a great explanation. He's just the boogeyman. That's that's the reason he does all this. He he he's he's just like this everlasting being. He's not supernatural. He just lives forever and just kills people. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, he he he's the boogeyman. He's the shape. He's he's evil itself. He's whatever you yeah. wanna think he is. He's he's just he's just a man according to them. But...